So there's a recent game release that just happened that just honestly puts Halo Infinite's customization to shame because it's what we should have had in the first place. But hear me out first. I'll first start off by saying that Halo Infinite's customization is good. The fact that you can customize so many different armor pieces like the helmet, the visor, chest piece, shoulder pads individually, your wrist parts, uh, your knee pads, side packs, extra armor emblems and effects and things like that. It's honestly quite amazing. One of the most extensive bits of customization we've ever had within a Halo game. A whole heck of a lot better than Halo 5. And before we go any further, I just want to say if you guys enjoyed these type of videos, make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let's get right into those details. But there was one thing about Halo Infinite's customization that's always just kind of rubbed me the wrong way, and I think a lot of people kind of feel the same way, and that is with the coding system in this game. First of all, being the only system within the game, which I find such an oddity with the long history of in-depth customization we've had within Halo to only let players select preset colorization for your armor sets. Like this takes you straight back to how it was like back in Halo 2, Halo 3, even less than Halo 3 type of customization when it comes to colors for your character. Because back in the classic Halo days, like right over here, you used to be able to choose your colors that you would have, your primary and secondary colors, which a lot of people really wanted for Halo Infinite, but then just weren't able to achieve that, which is such a shame because the colors within your character's Spartan end up being a lot of people's like personalities really became part of their identity, like being like, I'm a red and black Spartan. That's like who I am, I'm orange and blue, or whatever color customization you like, you know, it's up to you. But my friend recently sent me this video from Pirate Software, and it was him playing Warhammer 40K, and it really just kind of showed me what we could have had, and what we should have had with Halo Infinite. This was all made by me in the game, and we can go and edit this armor, we can go look at the Astartes chapters, and we can see this right here. And I can change out any of the colors on this that I want to. For just like keep an eye on what so you can do right in up. Warhammer. I don't know, we're going to get the breastplate, right? You can just change any of this to anything you really want it to be. Including, like, metallic colors or anything like that. I, so I made it look the way that I want to. You can change all the armor trim and everything like this to whatever you want to. That so right there, dude. Amazing. And to unlock these, you actually use in-game currency you get from doing missions. And you can go in and, like, unlock these from all these different types of space marines. Which is cool. Be yeah, rewarded be for playing the game. You can. You can go and do this. So if you want to get like all the stuff from the Death Guard, you can go and do that. You want to get it from the Iron Warriors, you got that. Black Legion's in there. So like, it's pretty goddamn cool. And this isn't money. This is playing the game currency. So like, this is a huge offering on a game that's 1.0. And I'm pretty impressed, man. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, it's crazy the amount of customization that's offered for the players by just buying into the game. Like, yes, I understand. Before anyone leaves a comment, I see you out there. Yes, Halo Infinite is a free-to-play game, and they need to earn money in some kind of ways through the customization. It seems to be the most allowed version of monetization in gaming. That makes a lot of sense. But you also need to give players the carrot at the end of the stick to keep playing the game. They'll have them earn things within the game by playing, spending time within the franchise. I would say that's what the recent addition of the exchange is there to do. But again, it's offering a lot of the customization either that was through weekly rewards or stuff that people just kind of earn through previous battle passes, I'm assuming. I don't know, like it's all just kind of comes from different events and different weekly ultimates and things like that but if you're someone like me who's played this game a lot you know about 900 hours put into halo infinite that most of the notable customization you pretty much already have unlocked but the thing that hurt me the most watching that little clip right there was this part right here where he's able to zoom in on the shoulder pad and able to individually color a section of the armor to look exactly how they would like them to look now i'm not saying that halo infinite needs to adopt that similar type of thing, but I would just think that there is room in the Halo Infinite's customization or wherever the next Halo customization will be, that there is room for basic level color customization, primary, secondary colors like we were talking about even before the launch of Halo Infinite, but also room for coatings because this one, I think, puts a lot more pressure on the developers over at 343 to really make something that's like, interesting and exciting for people to utilize for the coloring schemes like when people saw that they just released like these cadet coatings of like blue red brown cobalt cyan green like these are very basic colors like yes it did give these out for free but i think they came into the game 
quite a bit later, if I remember correctly. Same thing with these steel coatings as well. They did come out later, but then like, yeah, the Banished Deception, this was something you were able to earn by playing the campaign. That's a really nice coating. That's a really nice addition out there. But it seemed like most of the customization that you could possibly earn within Halo Infinite was tied behind a paywall. And even then, it wasn't really that customizable. When you think about it, mainly just because like these are preset colors that you would have to have for just this coating specifically, right? You can't go in and change each shoulder pad. You can't change the chest piece or one leg or the other. Like you can with Warhammer 40K, you can actually do that level of customization within the game, which is something that makes me just go like, man, I just wish we could have done something similar, right? Because if you look at this right here, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. We kind of go this other video I found online. This person was showcasing how you can go through these different colors and select different armor pieces to color them exactly how you want. When we move my webcam so you can see what I'm talking about right here. Like that person's shoulder pad right here is like you can change the color of the emblem. His uh, right arm right there is red because they selected that piece of armor to be red. And I just feel like that's where Halo Infinite or the next Halo project could absolutely do. It's like have your basic red, blue, greens, gold, whatever kind of basic coloring that you want. But then if you want something that looks a little bit more interesting, a little more intricate, or something that just look, looks quite a bit more wild, say like this coding right here in Halo Infinite, something like that, that's something that I think would be worth like a paywall behind because look how intricate and different and interesting that looks. But also allow the customization to be Maybe that one be a set coating that you can only can utilize or some of your more basic colors like green here, for example, can be utilized on a separate armor piece by themselves. If you want to combine however you like, again, you probably have some ugly options. You probably have some good looking options on top of that as well. But it just makes you go like, man, I just wish we had something like this in Halo Infinite where we'd be able to one, satiate people's needs for wanting to create their color, right? Cause that's the biggest issue I feel like with the coding system is that you don't really feel like you created this Spartan, right? You you chose this Spartan, right? People don't have that attachment behind say like the gold coding like we have right here because like I just bought it in the store cause I thought it looked nice. But the thing is like, again, when it comes to like, really nice customization like this, when it's in the store, a lot of people will buy it at the same time. So everyone else is using that exact same coding, right? So it loses that individuality when it comes to free to play shop items, right? And also limiting the customization where it's just one entire art piece is that color. If you don't understand what I'm saying here. And like I said earlier, you lose that personal connection with the color scheme, right? Like no one in Halo Infinite feels like, oh yes, I am the Covenant Frontline Spartan. This is my coloring, like the Covenant Blue. Like I just don't really feel like there is any like personal attachment with the color schemes, right? Like a lot of people out there feel that way about their emblems, about their Spartans and things like that. I've talked with developers at 343 and they mentioned this as well. They're like, you lose that personal connection with your Spartan when you have to choose these preset colorings that you know you just chose because you thought it looked nice and that's something that you really created and, and owned right that's not your coloring that's just something someone made for you and you put that on because you thought it looked nice um we can go even something more basic right like uh, if you look into warframe is another game where that's a big part of warframe is the customization to be able to that's almost like basically the end game of warframe they call it fashion frame because once you get to a certain level within the game you just kind of keep repeating things that kind of make your character keep looking cooler right and that by just playing the game right like right here, you can see it's just basic. This is, video was from seven years ago, so it's probably even better than it is right now. But you have primary color, secondary color, tertiary color, accents, and energy. You have different types of customization as well on top of this you can select. And also the great thing about this, vertical menus, dude. Oh my God, vertical menus are so much better than this horizontal scrolling that we've had recently. Not just in Halo, but also in other games and recently as well when it comes to UI. But you unlock this by playing the game. And so I just think that it would just be Something that the developers over at 3 for the really need to take in consideration when it comes to the next Halo project of how are we going to handle customization? What kind of stuff can we allow? You know, because there is a very long legacy of customization within Halo. Reach really just kind of set the bar of what people currently expect out of the game. And I feel like we're still just 
trying to reach that point and you can just tell that like how other game developers out there other studios other games are able to utilize different aspects of their customization but also make it an engaging form of content to keep people playing and keep playing the game but also not monetize it so heavily that's where it feels like with halo infinite that like we can all kind of just see the right off the rip that like codings were made to be monetized that was the big thing because we knew that like we all agreed that like customization was the way to be able to monetize a free-to-play game which i still agree with that as well but there is room for primary secondary colors and codings to be mixed in there as well there just needs to be a way for them to really make it something worthwhile or make it feel like you created this spartan or even just look at halo 3 here for example right the limitations you have in halo 3 are far more than you do in halo if in halo if you can actually create a much more unique looking character but because in halo 3 what you had you're able to choose like a chest piece you can choose your helmet primary secondary colors along with your emblem as well that you can actually combine with primary secondary colors as well but the thing is that like again like i said that you chose these colors you wanted this primary color this secondary color that helmet that chest piece whatever kind of customization you wanted with your spartan that just made so then like you made that rather than just chosen picking something that someone pre-made for you to enjoy just kind of going back to this clip right here man it just it, it's just like looking back at this three years later it just it doesn't feel right man the body of customization content that we have on day one ensures that there will be millions of customization combinations for spartans no, on the battlefield not really. that includes things like armor coatings uh, armor emblems various armor effects down to the individual armor pieces. So your shoulders, your gloves, your knee pads, your helmet, your visor, your helmet attachments. Then you look at weapons and we've got a whole slew of customization yeah, offerings. Again, today. like the customization, not really that crazy. Like for weapons, end up just being coatings that you could choose. Uh, again, like when it comes to like having millions of combinations, I mean, what constitutes valuable customization, right? Uh, because like if you take in consideration like emblems and backdrops along with the armor and also the coloring of the coatings yeah you probably have a, probably close to a million different versions of combinations but what's like actually like valuable customization though because i would argue that things like emblems um not really anything that people really strive for in halo infinite especially since it was something that we actually got for free for just playing the game and you actually earn things by just unlocking things right like if you go into the game here i can show you guys what i'm talking about like all these different types of, like like emblems right here like you don't really have any form of attachment to these because one you don't really feel like you earned them you just played a lot and then you earned enough credits to unlock this skull uh emblem like i, I didn't make that i didn't really seek after it or anything it was just there and I have the points kind of thing or same thing like with this Warhog uh driving offensively right or like this uh, banner with like a flag on it like it's not really anything that would get people excited but like people get excited about this banner flag if it's like I created this pattern I created like this emblem with this angle of the flag and things like that like that's something where like it just loses that personality and that's something I think that with the next Halo project 343 really needs to take that into consideration about how do they make the next Halo game? Do they want to do like a upfront $70 price tag and then you can unlock your customization by just playing the game? Do you still go with free to play, but provide players more options to play the game and then earn that way? Because for the longest time, we were not able to do that in Halo Infinite. It was really pretty much all funneling into the shop in some kind of capacity. I mean, there's YouTube channels dedicated to the shop and talking about each update and what's good, what's bad, why is this overpriced? Why can't I just buy like this weapon model individually, which is something that we've been requesting for Halo Infinite since the launch of the game and still has never changed when it comes to Halo Infinite. I don't ever see that changing as well. Like if I could just drop 500 credits for this weapon model, I probably would. You know, it's a cool looking weapon model, but I'm not about to drop 2,200 credits which is effectively $22 in US money 
to have really just this weapon model. Like, I'm just not going to do that. I think this really just goes to show that 343 trying to replicate the type of customization and monetization that you see like in Fortnite or like in Apex Legends or in Call of Duty because those games haven't really set a precedent within their franchises of having like detailed individual customization, right? Where like in Call of Duty, you just kind of buy a skin. Same thing with Fortnite, you just kind of buy a skin and that's your character that you want to play as. But us Halo players have been enjoying something far better for far longer. Again, a point back to Halo Reach in 2010, pretty much gave us the new level of accepted customization that we've wanted in a Halo game for the longest time. And then we've been kind of seeing that being slowly eroded away until Halo Infinite, where we saw like, oh my God, we're gonna get like reach level customization. This is going to be amazing. And it was so close to being that. But then there were decisions that were made with the customization of Halo Infinite that limited the true potential and fun that players could have with the customization of Halo Infinite. The opportunities were there, they just were not taken so what am i saying in this video like why even bother making this right i'm not just saying this to rant to be a sad halo kid uh or try to get views of what the current warhammer 40k views are are out there right now um but <laughs> what i'm saying is that like i really want to see something close to what we have for halo infinite when it comes to the next halo project because we do know that's currently in the works uh, i would say earliest we'll see that game is probably 2026 possibly possibly but we do know that a halo project has been in the works since 2022 but just seeing what warhammer 40k gets what like other games like warframe have as well and what we get in halo infinite we just we recognize what the potential halo has and for it to be limited so much by clearly money driven decisions to try to monetize the player base as much as possible it just feel like it just lent itself to not the best possible experience that we know we could have if you guys made it this far in the video i really appreciate you leave a green heart so i know who the real ones are out there in the comment section if you guys enjoyed this video there's plenty more of them like it right here so thank you all for watching greatly appreciate it i'll catch you on the next one peace out